Yeah, well, you're acting like an amateur, Peter. Oh. How's it going? This is Nick with Daisy Opals. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I bought a Cab King. Previously, I had been using my Dremel tool setup where I basically built a homemade cabbing station out of a Dremel tool. It was awesome. I really like my Dremel tool setup, but it gets kind of old switching out the tips every time you want to work with a new grit. Also, pretty difficult to cut larger stones on the teeny little Nova tips that I was using. So, Amazon had this great deal, 17 a month with the Amazon store card. Bam, bought the cab station. I'm not really gonna get into comparing the two, uh, a homemade station versus a cab station. I'll do that later. Right now, I just wanted to dig in and make stuff. So I have some opal cut and I have a beautiful pendant made of silver and gold that you guys are gonna see me make as well. So enjoy. And some of the footage quality is kind of bad on the Cab King. I'm not used to shooting on it. So please excuse me and enjoy the video. All right, and here we go. Got this huge box in the mail. Of course, that is the Cab King and uh, pretty exciting. But it is very heavy, actually. Like, I couldn't lift it by myself. So if you're like a smaller person or you're not, not too strong, you definitely might want to get some help. Have that planned before you order it. And I got this for about $117 a month on Amazon's uh, little plan with their store card. I don't think this deal goes uh, outside of the US though, so sorry Australia. Got a nice certificate of authenticity, a manual, and a wonderful diamond abrasives magazine. Here's all the accessories, wheels, hoses, spacers, water pump. Felix trying to get out of a box. He's having trouble. Okay, maybe later. Massager's not included. I'm not really sure why I put that in the video. That's a nice massager. I got all my pieces. Make sure you, you take account of all the pieces when you order. They give you a checklist. Just in case they missed anything, like the smock. You don't want to miss out on that smock. Let's do a magic reveal here. Um, these are the spacers for people who are going to buy this. This should be important to you. Take a look at the order of these spacers. One is different than the other two. There's a bigger one. There's some smaller two. And you always want to put the wheel on with that, you know, ribbing towards the inside. And there you go. Tighten it back up. Got the lamp, and here we are. You can see my water set up down there. It's just a drainage bucket. The Home Depot is the drainage, and then on the left, that's the one with the water pump, and uh, that's the clean water. Do not reuse your water. Don't recycle your water. And of course, I got some something nice to uh, to try it out with. This was an expensive parcel. I might have paid too much for it, but uh... Yeah, this is Nobby from Lightning Ridge. Nobby Opal means it's kind of chunky. It's not seam opal. And uh... You gotta love that sound. It's a nice sound. Opal on a plate. Uh, some of these pieces look really, really good. There's, there's one that actually looks kind of like a, a, a witch's hat, which is a special type of opal. There it is that uh, I've seen in, you know, black opal direct videos. And it supposedly means you have a good chance of getting something great. That looks like a witch's hat to me. Like I said, I can't be sure, but I'm excited. So I'm going to go with this one. But we're dealing with opal, which is pretty unpredictable. And this may not have gone as planned. So for the cutting section, we're going to have to change the vibe a little bit. And I'm I'm sorry for the footage quality. I'm trying to figure out how to light it properly. Hello, my name is Melissa and I am going to narrate this section. Let's turn on the wheels and the water, shall we? I started by trying to cut off some of the sand around the outside of the opal. This would help me begin to shape the opal, but mostly it would allow me to get a better idea of where the color is located. As I cut down further and further I began to realize that there was a gigantic black spot consuming the center of the stone. It was not going to be a large opal. I was sad. So I decided to set it down and quit opal permanently and begin to create art with staples from a stapler. I stapled tirelessly for days on end. 
a stapled abstract, free form, even self portraits in landscapes. You might be thinking that this is a waste of staples. I must ask you, do painters waste paint? I became bored of my work with staples and returned to cutting opal. Okay, well, that was, that was rough. Can't always get what you want with opal, but I have confidence in this next stone. Looks good from the outside. And uh, I think I can narrate this one myself. No emotion here to hide. So I'll start going around the outsides there, trying to cut in again and get a peek on the inside to see where the sand end, yeah, where the sand ends and where the color begins. And there I'm rounding off the edges to see if maybe the sand doesn't go so low. You can kind of get an idea of how how low the sand will run when you cut off the edges here, and it's looking. Okay, I'll be honest, it's not looking so good. But I'll keep taking it lower and lower and hoping for the best because I want a big stone out of this. I don't want to have to cut this up into smaller pieces because of the sand. Still sand, so at this point it's it's looking like a I I I can't even I can't even deal with this. I it's a bust. It's not gonna work. Melanie, what's your name? Mel Leslie? Yes, hello. This stone was some Thank you. So I quit Opal and began to focus on break dancing. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I actually did get a good stone, and it was kind of when I wasn't expecting it. I had stopped recording. This is just a reference video, you know, so I can check back for myself later. Uh, it looked like it was going to be a sandy mess, uh, but it was not, as you'll see. Turned out pretty good. And um, there it is. That's... That looks like a, a teardrop of a god or something like that. I mean, that is nice. I ended up making some pretty nice jewelry out of it. So you can see that in the whole process. And uh, I think you're going to like how it turned out. Like this. Bam. That's, that's how it turned out. That way you don't have to skip to the, uh, you know, the, the part, the end, if you don't want to. But um, yeah, let me show you how I made this. First of all, I messed up a lot, uh, as you can see here. I melted a few bezels, and I even took it to pretty much the last step, right before burnishing, only to discover that my bezel was slightly diagonal and the stone wouldn't fit anymore. Yeah, lots of trial and error. I, I probably could have completed this a few times, but it wouldn't have been as perfect as I wanted it to be. I really wanted to take this one to the next level. I really wanted to show the back side of the stone. I wanted to have a clear back, and so my idea was to just put a little hole in the back plate and then thread my jeweler saw through it. But all I had was this IKEA drill. You may know it from previous videos. It's not really a, not really much of a drill, but it's what I've got. You can see me struggling there. But the IKEA, there we go. but the IKEA drill did the trick. I was able to puncture the hole and thread my jeweler's saw through, and then start cutting out the inside of the back plate. And then I had an old bezel from a from a different project um, that was made of gold, and I thought it would be really cool to put the gold on the silver. So I attached the bezel with some gorilla glue. Just kidding. That's flux. Just making sure the bezel won't come off, and then it was time to sand. You can see I'm sanding all in one direction. That's how you get that satin finish. Quick final polish for the stone. 
And uh, I polished the silver using the same contraption, using this Home Depot silver polish. And then here you go. I think it did a pretty good job because that is very shiny. Slip the stone in there, fits perfectly. Very satisfying. Yes, very satisfying. And then I began burnishing, which is a really fun and satisfying part of this. It's kind of like the last, one of the last steps. And there it is, completed. Pretty happy with it. Um, there's a picture with a chain that's actually my girlfriend's chain, but I think I'll buy a chain for it to, uh, to sell. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching my video. And uh, check out the Etsy store. Check out my Instagram at Daisy Opals. And thank you guys very much. Have a good one. How's it going? This is Nick from Daisy Opals. I love kittens and I'm not too familiar with turtles. I got a cab king.